Hello and welcome to the Infogol Football Betting Podcast. Um, I am back, had a little week off, left these two to their own devices. I think they put on a decent show last week. Um, but yeah, we've got a little bit of Yorkshire representation. I know Liam will try and argue that Middlesbrough is in Yorkshire, but um, <laughs> I'm not having any of it. Um, yeah, I'll go straight to you, Liam. I know last week, obviously, the, 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 all the rage in regarding the Premier League a couple of weeks ago was how many goals have been. But last week, there was just 19 goals. And I think you wrote in your review article, there was around 21 expected goals. I mean, is there any reason in particular why you think that might be the case? Yeah, yeah there's 21.85 expected goals across the matches, which... 10 games is pretty dire, 19, 19 goals scored. It's 10 XG less than the average for full match days for the rest of the season, whether it's just fixture pile-up or just teams having a bit more of a, a think about their approaches after the amount of goals that have been scored. There has been quite a bit of over overperformance over the start of the season, so it's a bit of regression in the mean as well, but yeah, it was a really full weekend. Yeah, and it made for some pretty poor viewing, really, from a spectator standpoint. I say spectator, watching it from your homes, obviously. Um, I think, was it 12 teams that failed to crack one expected goal, which is um, really tragic, um, <laughs> given what we'd seen in recent weeks and the fact that we'd seen so many goals. But hopefully we'll, we'll see a little bit more um, entertainment this weekend. Obviously, we had Champions League action in midweek. It was a really good midweek for, for the English clubs. They won by an aggregate of 14-0 in total in the Champions League. Liverpool, Manchester United, Man City and Chelsea. Um, does that mean that there's an English name on the trophy, Stephen? <laughs> I know there was some speculation in the BT studio last night about whether Manchester United could go all the way. I mean, I think that's probably quite unrealistic. Let's not get carried away. But that performance last night particularly impressed us. I think it was a very good win, but... Leipzig did drop away in quite spectacular fashion. It was a bit strange to see, a bit unusual. Um, but yeah, some good results for the English teams this this, uh, this week, and it's good good to see. Yeah, you touched on United there. They're probably the most eye-catching result, and eye-catching start, really, to the Champions League group stage, beating both PSG and Leipzig, finalists and semi-finalists from last season. They're now backed into really strong favourites to qualify, which is understandable, given the fact that they now play Basak Shahir back-to-back games. Um they go into into this weekend on the real high. They're playing um, Arsenal. That's where my nap of the week is coming yeah, in that game, Manchester United versus Arsenal. On the Sunday, uh, 4.30 kickoff, um, I'm going to go with the under 2.5 goals. And the reasoning for that, I know people might get carried away, the fact that United put five past Leipzig, but I just can't see Arsenal playing in the same manner as Leipzig and, and letting Manchester United counter-attack on them, which is obviously their main strength. I think Arsenal set up in a much more much similar approach to, to what Chelsea did at Old Trafford last week, which was just trying to be hard to beat. Um, really dire in terms of uh, you know making it a spectacle, but trying to grind out some sort of result. And I think that that will probably lead to low scoring game. Um, obviously, United have, have been a little bit inconsistent in the league form so far this season, putting in a couple of good performances um, and then a couple of really poor ones. So um, not really sure what to expect from them. Solskjaer has rotated his team quite often as well since the Champions League restarted. So not too sure on team news either. But um, one thing is for sure, United are rightly favourites to win the match. But um, the main reason I'm going with the unders is because of Arsenal and, and the fact that they have taken a much more rigid defensive-minded approach this season under Arteta. They're allowing 1.3 expected goals against per game, which is down on their average from last season, which was around 1.55. So there are improvements there. Um, and while they have showed up defensively, going forward, they've been really, really poor, really uh, really. Just, just non, non-existent at times um, as a creative force. The average is 1.2 expected goals for per game, which is also down on last season's average of around 1.4. Um, really struggled to breach Leicester, um, and, they, and they have struggled on on the whole so far this season to create opportunities. And obviously, something that we, we've discussed um, in our previews re- uh, recently. I know Stephen, you mentioned it on social as well about Pierre and Aubameyang really been underutilised by Arteta. He's been on the end of chances equating to just 0.44 expected goals. And I think that you put it in the context, Stephen, of um, Branislav Ivanovic, who, who had 0.55 expected goals in his West Brom debut. So it just sort of emphasises how little Aubameyang is getting um, in, in scoring areas and, and being able to get on the end of chances. And that, as, soon as, as long as that is the case, Arsenal will struggle to score goals. And I can see this being potentially another nil-nil, nil-nil game, or, or maybe Manchester United nicking a, a narrow one-nil win. But I do think that, given the way that both teams will set up, Arsenal will try and keep things tight. Arsenal will try and play a deep defensive block, and Manchester United might not have the capabilities to, to unlock Arsenal's uh, defence. And as a result, low-scoring game under two and a half. Uh, it's around 
2.1 on the bet for exchange. The Infocore model gives um, around a 50% chance, so even money. So there's a small bit of value there, and, and that's definitely um, a bet that I really like the look of this week, and that's my nap. Uh, Liam, what's your nap of the weekend? I'm going to go to the Championship. I don't really see much, not much value in the Premier League this weekend, I don't think. I do like that, that bet you've pointed out there, but otherwise, I'm pretty disappointed with it, to be honest. So I'm going to go to the Championship with Preston against... Against Birmingham, uh, Preston a winner, 2.16. They've beaten 2-0 at, uh, against Millwall at home in midweek. That followed two like pretty good away wins. Quite surprising that they put in such a poor performance, but that's sort of what they've done at home home this season. Um, they're back on for this game, but I think it's just a case of translating what they've done away from home. They've been the, the best team away from home in, in terms of points. We've got 10 points, uh, second best team on XG. Averaged over two XG per game away from home. So, like I say, so if they just translate it over a deep deal, should have enough to beat Birmingham here. Birmingham are really poor on the road. They've got 2.7 XG in four games away from home. It's 0 0.68 per game. Being comfortably outplayed in all four of their away games there. So, it's more of a play on how bad Birmingham are. And I, I just think this is a week to go with Preston to translate their away form to home. And at 2.16... I fancy them at Eco to win here. Yeah, I like that. I think that, like you said, Preston's home form hasn't really been up to scratch, but if they'd have picked up that or if they'd have beaten Millwall in midweek, Preston would have probably gone off at odds on um, for this game. And I think it's, like I say, it's a price play and Birmingham haven't really shown up too much so far on the road. So yeah, I really like that bet. Um, Stephen, what is your nap of the weekend? Yeah, first of all, I'll just say I think that's a great bet from Liam. I was actually researching that a bit for my uh, Championship Saturday preview or I eventually did sway uh, for another game. But I'm actually staying in the championship as well. I'm, I'm going for over 2.5 goals in Swansea versus Blackburn at 1.95. Now, I've been impressed with Swansea this season. I mean, look, they, uh, they failed in the playoffs, didn't they, uh, against Brentford, but they've so, showed some good character and bounced back from that quite well. Um, and they've looked good going forward. They've averaged 1.55 expected goals for per game, generating eight and on penalty big chances so far. And, I did worry when um, Wayne Bruce obviously returned to Liverpool. He was quite a big part of uh, their side last season on loan. He scored 11 goals from, I think, 7.91 XG. But his absence doesn't really uh, seem to, to damage their attack that much going forward, to be fair. Um, they beat Stoke 2-0, and that was a good, uh, good way to bounce back from a string of underwhelming results recently. And interestingly, they've created the fourth most opportunities in the Championship, according to expected goals. But what's really caught my eye is, obviously, Blackburn actually sit at the top of the XG4 uh, table in the Championship. And they've averaged over two XG4 per game. Um, the Rovers have looked excellent under Tony Mowbray. And they've uh, obviously got Adam Armstrong. I know we've mentioned him quite a few times on the podcast. Um, he scored nine goals this season um, from 7.4 XG. And he's recorded 0 0.95 XG per average match, which obviously that, uh, he's the leader on that metric as well. So he's looked really good in front of goal. Um, they've actually netted 18 goals as a club. So look, they've looked really good going forward. And, I think this game's going to be between two attack-minded teams and it's really set up to be an interesting encounter. A good one for the neutral, at least. So, yeah, I think over 2.5 goals is a good bet here at 1.95. Yeah, surprised at the price of that, actually. Um, usually goals follow wherever Blackburn play at the moment. So 1.95 does seem like a, a really decent value bet. Um, so that rounds off section one. A reminder that, that everything that we talk about here, the percentages, the, the Infocore value bets, they're all available to download um, on the free downloadable app. You can download it via the app, Apple Store or Google Play Store, um, and everything that we discuss is available at your fingertips. Okay, on to section two now. Before we take a trip around Europe, I um, just want to settle something because there was a little argument <laughs> broke out in between about who gets the credit for that Abamyang tweet. Uh, so I need to apologise to Liam. It was Liam who who dug out that those stats about the uh, the Ivanovic comparison with with Abamyang. So Stephen taking the all the credit there and any excuse to take any glory. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So credit where it's due, Liam. You 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 dug that out. Um, so yeah, I've just settled that right there. Um, <laughs> um, Not yeah. much of an argument. No, no, it wasn't. It was more of an admission more than anything. Um, but yeah, so we're going to Europe, Europe now and, and selecting our, our naps from across the continent. Um, Stephen, we'll start with you. What's caught your eye? Yeah, I'm going across to Spain and La Liga, and I'm going for BTS No in Real Madrid versus Huesca at 1.79. Now, it's been a funny week or so um, for Madrid, I'd say. Obviously, they lost to the Shakhtar, and that was a depleted Shakhtar side. And then they went out and beat Barcelona, didn't they, in El Clasico? 
And then they drew against Munchen Gladbach in midweek. And I think Jake was on shot maps that night. It was quite a weird performance. I mean, Gladbach had one shot at the break and they were winning one nil. And that, that shot, would we give a 6% probability. So it was quite an undeserved lead at, at half time. but they came out in the second half and I'd say Gladbach did look like the better side. And um, obviously Madrid eventually did start to uh, turn things around towards the end of the half and at the end of the game with the more XG and uh, obviously they brought it back to 2 2, didn't they? So they'll be happy with that result in the end. I think they would have took that after going 2 0 down. Um, but interestingly, I know Liam's wrote about it a bit in his, um, his review. Like Madrid were really good defensively last year, which is quite unusual for them on the way to win the title. Um, the average just uh, 1.04 X goals against per game. So they were really solid in defence. Um, this season, they have let a few more chances on goal. They've averaged 1.23 X goals against per game. And obviously lost at home against Cadiz most recently in the league. And that was a very disappointing result, obviously, like losing to them. And it was 1-0. And I'm just going to hope that was a rare blip. And Huesca, yeah, their opposition, they've only averaged one XG going forward per game. And they're not exactly electric going forward. So I'm going to side with Madrid to bounce back and keep a clean sheet. And that's the angle I'm going for. So BTS, no, at 1.79, I think it's another good bet. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Madrid we do get this week. Um, obviously, you mentioned there they've had the troubles in recent uh, recent weeks. But the game against Barcelona in El Clasico, they were excellent, rightly won, won that one. And um, obviously, the midweek saw the reintroduction of Eden Hazard um, through um, obviously been missing for injury. So, um, obviously, bolster that Madrid attack if he's, he's given a nod. But I'm pretty sure Zidane might have one eye on the Champions League game with Inter Milan uh, in midweek. So, he could rest and rotate. I mean... Um, you know, that could put that bet in jeopardy. But I like your angle. I like, your, you, you, you know, your, your thought process and the fact that Huesca in particular haven't really shown up in attack. But um, I'm just pointing it out, just be a little bit wary, um, depending on team news, um, because of that massive game, given the fact they've only taken one point from the two Champions League group games so far. Um, Liam, where are you going across Europe? Yeah, I'm going to Italy. I know you like this bet as well, but Roma against Fiorentina. Uh, Roma at 1.87 on the Better Player Exchange. I uh, actually watched Roma on Monday night against AC Milan. Obviously, a better watch than Premier League games for the majority of the weekend, but especially on Monday. I don't know whether you agree, but I think AC Milan is probably the best team in Serie A since lockdown. Very close between them and Atlanta, but but Roma went toe to toe with the San Siro on Monday. Very entertaining game, 2.6 to 2.2 XG. So. Coming away with that with a three-three draw, it's a it's a really good, really good point. Um, now, def- facing Fiorentina, the Fiorentina were lucky to beat Udinese last weekend. The allowing over cheaper game, it's I mean they're getting some results, but the underlying process is really really poor. And coming up against Roma, like Roma's only defeat this season was on a technicality at an eligible player. So they got given a 3-0 defeat against Verona. Otherwise, they've been, they've been really impressive from an underlying process standpoint. And the two draws that they've had have been against AC Milan, like we said, and do better against Juventus, but could only manage a 2-2 draw at home against them. So I think at 1.87, that's a great bet. Yeah, you mentioned it. I, I've had that down as, as my bet, but I'll let, let you take it. I do think it's a really, um, really solid play. Fiorentina, like you said, been pretty underwhelming. And Roma, been really impressive so far this season, especially in attack. I think they've averaged around 2.3 expected goals uh, four per game. So, yeah, so I really like that. And I, I'm going to go back to Spain for mine. Um, Granada versus Levante. It's another team that play in the Europa League on Thursday. We're recording this on Thursday. Um, but Granada have been really impressive since uh, La Liga started. Obviously, they really impressed last season, finishing uh, in the top seven. They sit third um, through game week seven, do Granada. Um, and aside from a 6-1 defeat at Atletico Madrid, they've been really impressive. That was a real blip for Granada, a real, um, yeah, something we don't really see too often from a team that is so well de- defensively drilled and very tight and um, play on fine margins. So to see them concede six was um, really, really strange. And the total goals that they've conceded so far this season is eight. So six of those have come in one match and um, two of those have come in, in the other five or six. Uh, the home process has been fantastic so far this season as well. They've averaged 1.51 expected goals for per game and, and just 0.67 expected goals against. They have played Sevilla uh, at home as well. One of the Spain's strongest teams got a 1-0 win against that, albeit uh, 10 men. Um, and they beat PSV last week, which is another really strong team across Europe um, and also 
beat Katafi, another team that that sit, I think, well, last season finished around um, seven four or eighth in our XG table as well. So they picked up some really good wins of late, and they come into this in good form. They're playing Levante, who sits second bottom in the table. Um, they're rightly around the relegation zone according to expected points, conceding around one point six expected goals against per game, um, and they're a real serial overperformer um, according to expected goals over the last two or three seasons, mainly defensively. Uh, where they've averaged over two expected goals in in both uh, two expected goals against in both 18, 19, and 19, 20, but been very fortunate to to survive. This season it looks like they might have a, a bit more of a struggle on their hands, and and a trip to Granada is always a tough place to go nowadays. And and the price, I mean, when I told Liam the price, he uh, he had pulled a, a very shocked face. A two point three for a Granada win in this game, which is I just think too big, and uh, and it's definitely more of a value play than anything to to get Granada on side. So that rounds off our little mini trip around Europe. Um, a reminder that obviously we quote in bet for exchange prices. And, and if you're new to the exchange, you bet 20, you get a free 20 pound bet to play with. Um, also, if you're new or an existing customer, there is the free bet streak offer that is run on the bet for exchange, where if you bet 20 pound on the exchange every week, you get five pound free bet. And if you win with that five pound free bet, then you get another one the following day and the following day, et cetera, until you lose. So some really good offers there. Um, and like I said, we quote bet for exchange prices mainly because they are, um, you do get better value, better prices than elsewhere. On to the final section now, and it's where we select our, our best lays of the week. Uh, a lay bet, just a reminder, is a, any bet in which you're opposing a certain team. So um, you're basically backing, if it's team A versus team B, you're basically, if you're laying team A, then you get the draw and team B on side. Uh, but as opposed to a normal double chance bet, you put £10 down on a lay bet, you get £10 back if it wins. Um, I think there's one team in particular that we're all in agreement that, that deserve a bit of a lay this week, but um, I'm going to leave it to you, Liam, to break that down and, and tell us who exactly that is. Yeah, I'll leave a bit of it for you as well. I know <laughs> best in this game, but um, opposing Sheffield Wednesday at 2.08, they play Wickham away from home. Well, Wickham gained the first point in midweek and perhaps deserved a bit more based on the chances created. Created 1.78 against against Watford in a 1-1 draw. And Watford have been one of the best defences in the league so far. So that's quite impressive. Wickham have got problems in defence, but this Chef Wed team isn't really the team to take advantage of that, to be honest. Uh, they're averaging less than one next year per game. And the out in midweek against Rotherham was pretty shocking, to be honest. Um, 2.08 was quite a shock when I saw that. Um, I mean, yeah, you, you've said most of it already. The, the process is poor. Um... They're a very, very hard team to watch at the minute, Sheffield Wednesday. They play in such a, a, a rigid manner. Um, it's back to front quickly, long balls, a lot of um, you know heading of the ball. The ball never seems to be on the ground for too long when uh, when Sheffield Wednesday are pay, playing. And I think Gary Monk's basically just trying to make us hard to beat, but he's doing a really bad job of it at the moment. Um, not helped by injuries and suspensions, of course. Going to Wickham, uh, we've got no Joost van Aken, who, who got sent off at Luton against Luton last week. Tom Lee's got sent off in midweeks, so missing two centre halves. We're already missing Che Dunkley as well. So, serious problem area for us there. And, and like you said, Wickham will be buoyed by that point. They were really impressive against Watford. Deserved the three points based on expected goals. And um, yeah, we, we're all just pretty surprised to see the, the price around Sheffield Wednesday. Um, I mean, understand to see them favourites because Wickham are obviously massively underrated um, throughout the season. But to see them touching even money is is really, really laughable based on what we've seen so far this season. So um, I'm hoping that we're wrong. I hope Sheffield Wednesday do get the win, but at the prices, it's um, it really isn't a sensible bet to back Sheffield Wednesday there. Um, so yeah, I think they're around 2.08 to, to lay on the bet for exchange. And it's a bet that we're all in agreement with. I think you've put, included it in your championship article, haven't you, Stephen? Yeah, I was just about to make the point as well that I've included that in my preview, but I think uh, Wickham were actually quite unfortunate not to win that game. I know you've touched on. I mean, they had a last-minute goal ruled out. It was a head end, got choked off. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a great bet from, from both of you. But I'm going across um, to Lee Chelsea this weekend, actually, at 1.58. And I uh, got some looks from Liam when I suggested this was going to be my lay. I think he might have thought this was a bit brave, taking on the Blues. Um, but it's quite interesting. I mean, look... Burnley haven't been fantastic and I know it's a results business and they've just got one point on the board and it's all ifs and buts but they look good against Spurs and they won the XG battle and against West Brom on another day I think they could have got the win there Chris Wood missed two reasonably big chances I think one was a big chance so over 35% I think the other was just under us so around 30% so 
on another day, I know, like I said, it's ifs and buts. They could have had six points on the board there. And look, if they did, they'd be above Brighton. And I think everyone's raved on about Brighton and the way they've been playing this season. But what's really caught my eye is that Burnley have just conceded just three non pen big chances this season. Only Villa have conceded less. And according to expected goals, they do actually have the best defence in the league, averaging just 1.14 XGA per game. And now look, the goals have to come from somewhere. That's obviously an issue. But Chelsea aren't untouchable. They conceded three against West Brom and they conceded three against Southampton. So yeah, I think Burnley can get a result. Yeah, I don't think Chelsea are all that at the moment. I mean, I've not been too convinced. they yet to really gel. I know they had a good result uh, midweek in, uh, in, the Euro, in the Champions League, sorry. But yeah, so me lay lay, lay in Chelsea at 1.5. Yeah, I mean, that, that was one that I looked at in particular. I think mainly due to the fact that Burnley are, like you said, a really strong defensive unit. Uh, they limited Spurs to just 0.8 expected goals on Monday night and Spurs have been averaging over two expected goals per game throughout the course of the Premier League season so far. So that was a really impressive performance and something similar would we'll definitely see, um, you know, hopefully if, if the XG total remained the same for this game, it would likely end up in a draw as opposed to a defeat, which in which case the lay bet would win. Um, I'm actually going to lay Spurs. Um, I've just mentioned them there. They're at home to Brighton uh, on Sunday afternoon. It's one of those games that's on, unfortunately, behind a pay-per-view wall, which I think is something that we all agree should just be got rid of. Um, but yeah, if you are wanting to pay for it, I think that you might be in for a good game. I think that Brighton are a, a team that do step up and play much better against better teams. They struggle to break down teams that sit in a low block, the likes of Palace and West Brom in the last two matches in which they've drawn. But Against both Chelsea and Manchester United earlier on in the season, they were exceptional. Really unfortunate not to get any points from those matches. They won the XG battle against Manchester United, 2.9 to 1.9. Uh, and against Chelsea, I think they allowed Chelsea just 0.3 non-penalty expected goals or something uh, along those lines. So it was a really decent performance from them. And something similar here would, would obviously be <laughs> very nice for, for Graham Potter's side as, as they continue to play well and, and not get the results that the performances deserve. And I know that a lot of people have them included in that in, in that relegation mix-up, but I think if they continue playing in the same manner, Infocol is, is very confident that they'll swerve relegation once again this season. I think they sit around fifth in our expected goals table through six matches. So there's a lot to like about them. Um, Spurs, they, they've obviously got the win against Burnley. They were far from convincing. It was, it was a game of fine margins, one big chance at either end. Uh, the, the more clinical team won on the day, basically. Um, Kane Son linked up once again. Um, like I said, uh, just talking previously there, they're averaging around two expected goals per game. So they are a decent attacking unit, but defensively, they've been far from solid. They're average, allowing around 1.4 expected goals against per game. So they are gettable. Um, they're yet to win at home as well. They lost at Everton, at home to Everton in the first game, drew with Newcastle in a game in which Newcastle snatched a point. But last time out against West Ham, they, you know, 3-3 draw while it was extremely dramatic uh, based on the chances created in the match. It was a relatively fair result after Spurs raced into that early lead. So yet to win at home. I think Brighton will fancy the chances of getting something. Um, like I said, they, they step up against the better teams last season. If you remember, Brighton actually beat Spurs at the Amex 3-0 quite comfortably. Um, and then when Mourinho was in charge at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, it Tottenham did win 2-1, but Brighton won the XG battle on that day. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that they could do something very similar. And I don't see it as a very good matchup for Spurs, this one. So um, the price is, again, it's mainly a price play. Lane Spurs at 1.68 um, to struggle to another potentially draw or, or defeat at home. So that rounds off the episode this week. There's obviously quite a few talking points, um, a lot of bets there. Um, hopefully we can provide some winners for you, but if you want any more insights um, or any other matches that you want to get some in information of, uh, visit infogoal.net or download the free Infogoal app. We obviously do previews every week um, looking at specific games. Um, they're all, all able to view on the app or, or via the website. And obviously, much more features um, that we could discuss that are available on the app. Obviously, the, the main one being the, the in-play XG and, and the live shot maps, which you should definitely check out.